right. Well, it's great to be here. And actually, that's a very good segue into this talk right here. Um, so what is Langchain? It's an application development framework that makes it easy to build AI-powered applications. And you can think about, at, at the, about it as a three-layer cake. So at the bottom, you have our platform, uh, which has Lang Smith, which is a observability platform, which we'll talk about, and also a prompt hub. In the middle is our very popular open source library, which has many different components for building LLM applications. And on the top are things you can build with these components, different use cases. We actually talked about a lot of them earlier today. You saw summarization, you saw RAG. Um, so let's talk about building blocks first. So one actually kind of funny thing is that we have an integration hub here which shows all the integrations across Langchain. There's over 500 from document loaders, vector stores, LLMs. And you can see Elastic is actually the number two most popular uh, vector store, so that's kind of nice. Um, it's very heavily used. And I'll show you here kind of how this works. So you can interoperate these components. Um, so there's many different document loaders. You have data from you know, structured data, unstructured data, private, public, many different sources. You can load those in to any vector store you want. We have many different embedding models, over 40, which you can use to embed them. We saw a lot about embedding vectors. I don't want to re discuss that too much. The point is Langchain gives you kind of a, a breadth of different options for each of these components. So from document loaders, over 150, over 40 embedding models, over 50 vector stores. And here's the fun part. If you have, for example, an app that uses Elastic, you can connect that app to over 90 different LLMs very easily with Langchain. It's a single kind of a single line of code change, and you can just swap in and out different models. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, with use cases. So we actually have documentation on all of our use cases. You can go to langchain.com. We have Colab notebooks you can use to kind of explore different use cases. Uh, it'll go walk through the code, show you how to do it, summarization, agents, uh, RAG. Looking at RAG, for example, you saw a lot of this earlier, so I don't want to bore you too much. But the point is, you have a document loading, you have splitting, you have storage, in which case it can be elastic. Um, you have some retrieval step, which you talked about that a lot pre previously. And then you have an LLM to summarize the result. Now, here's something that's a little bit new. This is Langsmith, which is our platform for observability. And this is actually showing what's really happening under the hood when you're running an at RAG application. Well, a lot of the times when I build a lot of AI applications, you never really know what's going on under the hood. You're kind of calling a model. But this actually shows you. So on the, on the left here, you can see this is the trace of all the things happening when you're running RAG. And you can see that there's a retrieval stage, which is fetching, for example, from Elastic, relevant documents relative to your question. Now, what you're seeing here is exactly the prompt. This is exactly what's going into the model. It's kind of nice. You can see it, it's when you unpack it, it's pretty sane. It's basically saying, here's some documents. Summarize them relative to the below question. And those in the middle are actually the retrieved chunks. So those could be coming from Elastic or otherwise. And at the bottom, you can see the generation from OpenAI. So this is one of the nice things that Langsmith gives you, is this observability into exactly what's happening under the hood with your AI applications, um, in this case being RAG. Um, I'll show you another fun use case a little bit. So summarization is something that people often want to do. It's something that we want to do. We get hundreds of thousands of user questions per month on our documentation. So we want to build a, a tool to summarize those into the main themes. There's a few different ways you can tackle this using Langchain. So in some cases, on the top rung, if the, if the context is small, if you can stuff it all into an LLM. So Anthropic cur currently has 100,000 a token context window. So that'll fit like a 72-page PDF. That's actually pretty good. Um, but for much larger sources of data, you can do different things, like split it up, embed each, embed each split, and then cluster them, sample from clusters, summarize those samples. That's one way to kind of get around the, you know, how do you reduce the amount of information you need to pass to LLM. You can also do something called MapReduce, where you break up your documents, summarize each chunk, and then summarize the summaries, basically. So kind of a map stage, summarizes each small chunk, reduce stage, summarize your summaries. And we did this uh, with all of our, uh, all of these user questions asked to Langchain. Um, and you can see that the different approaches are kind of consistent, which is a good sanity check. Um, I don't want to spend too much time, because I, I, uh, I know I have to watch my time here. But we'll talk a little bit here about the different platforms. And so 
human rag app, it's using Elastic, that's all great. There's two big pieces you can use with, with Lion Chain here. One is the Prompt Hub. So this is a way to manage and store prompts, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And the second is Lang, so I showed you a little bit of previously. Um, so this is showing the prompt hub. This is pretty intuitive. You can go, you can find it online, but basically it's a nice library of prompts that people use for all sorts of different applications. RAG, summarization, there's some really cool ones on there. I encourage you just to go explore. Um, and what's nice is you can actually store your own prompts there as well. You can share them. You can only store them for yourself. It's very nice because you find when you're building these AI applications, you often have these nasty text files sitting around that contain your prompts, which is really ugly. They're hard to manage. This is a very nice way to store them all remotely, uh, virtually control them, and so forth, and share them. So Prompt Hub's a really nice tool. I encourage you to check it out. Um, and next slide. Yeah, and I'll show you one small case study in the remaining minute or two. I know we have lunch coming. I don't want to hold you too long. Um, but Langsmith was used, for example, most recently, um, for, fine to, for a, a fine-tuning evaluation. And so this is kind of a, a classic question. You hear a lot about fine-tuning right now, when to fine-tune, when to use RAG. Fine-tuning in general is really good for cases where you're trying to modify the form, like extraction, not really for, not really for um, factual retrieval. For re factual retrieval, uh, actually, RAG is quite a bit better, and there's a bunch of good resources. I'll share the slides here on, on why that is. Um, so we wanted to try an extraction task and test Langsmith with this. And what we chose was knowledge graph extractions. This is like taking a chunk of text, extracting knowledge graph triples, which is basically subject, predicate, object triples. It's a little bit wonky, I know. Here's some fun examples from a recent open source library on kind of how you can ask a question and it can retrieve these triples from a piece of text. And so you can use an LLM to do that triple extraction. And that's what we wanted to try to see if we can fine tune LLMs uh, to do this really effectively. So here's how we use Langsmith. This is kind of, so imagine you had an app that is doing text-to-graph extraction. You can send every generation from that app to Langsmith. So basically, you're recording everything the LLM is doing in your app. So later, you can go in Langsmith, look at all your generations, and, and kind of filter them in different ways. So what we did is we had this app, we filtered for all the bad generations, okay? So these are all the bad knowledge graph triple extractions. We clean them to build a training set. So then what we do is, you saw a nice uh, talk from Hugging Face earlier. We use the Hugging Face PEFT library to fine tune Llama 2 on this data set we collected using Langsmith, and then we evaluate it using Langsmith. Um, so this is kind of the overall flow. As you can see, Langsmith is very useful. If you have an app, it can collect all your generations. You can then st store them, filter them, clean them, build data sets, train on them, and uh, use evaluation as well, all in Langsmith. Um, and you can see here, we ran Langsmith evals across a bunch of different experiments. I don't want to bore you too much with the details. Main intuition actually was that a fine-tuned Llama 2 model actually did better than few-shot GPT-3.5, which is impressive. It's a much smaller model. Uh, few-shot GPT-4, of course, did better. But the point here is to more show the workflow that you can use Langsmith to kind of, ha if you have an app, collect your app generations, uh, filter them, clean them, use them for training, use them for evaluation. That's what we did here. This is all open source online, as well as some very nice uh, usage guides for fine tuning. Um, and I think I'm close to time, or uh, I, that is about it. Unfortunately, I have to go. I just had a baby uh, about a month ago, so my wife is telling me to, I need to get home. But uh, I'm online. I'm at R. Lance Martin on Twitter, so please feel free to reach out to me on there, and uh, it was very nice to be here to talk to all of you, um, and uh, thank you very much.